And we're back, doing some mechanics, and this time we're doing uh, springs, elastic type forces, and in particular how to use energy with springs. Uh, the, the two things that we know pretty well by now is, is the fact that for springs you have the two biggies. You have the energy stored in a spring, or what you can use to find the work done on the spring to stretch it or compress it, one half kx squared. And then through the negative gradient, okay, the negative derivative with position of that energy is negative kx. And that force equation is, is what we commonly call Hooke's Law. And the thing to remember about both these equations is, is really what that x represents is displacement. So some people might even want to think of it more as, as like a delta x in there. How far do you, does the mass move relative to equilibrium, wherever that happens to be? Now springs, as you can tell, when, once you're stretching or compressing a spring, when, when they're moving, uh, the force is changing, the energy is changing. These are non-constant types of forces in motion. So uh, Newton's laws would be tough to work with. It's a differential equation. Uh, instead, if, if at all possible, um, energy is a very practical and useful and easy way to handle non-constant forces and problems, including springs. So the conservation of energy equation looks something like this. It's the usual. Uh, your total energy of beforehand is potential is kinetic. And then you just ask a question, where does it go in your final snapshot? Uh, some might be potential, some might be kinetic, and then if you have friction, you, you have to worry about the heat being produced. So here's one that I know has caused uh, problems for a lot of students over the years. And it's uh, just a block or something like that, an object sliding down a hill is going to crash into a spring. And just the, the thing we're going to solve for is how far does the spring compress? We'll do this symbolically. Uh, I'm not going to worry about numbers right now. And we're going to assume that there is friction. Okay, there's a kinetic coefficient, which is a given in the problem. We know the mass. We know the distance that it slides before it hits the spring. And we'll assume we also know the spring constant down here, uh, along with the angle of the hill. And so we're, we're looking for this x in the problem. OK, so uh, one thing that I will always recommend when it comes to energy, in, in particular uh, N MGH, um, potential energy with gravity, is where do you put your height equals 0? Where's your reference point? I always choose it to be the lowest part of the problem. That way you're always guaranteed to not have negative numbers Heights will always be positive. So let's suppose that I put a little notch down here towards the bottom of the hill. Let's say that's where the spring gets compressed to. So that, that's going to be my zero height. So I'll draw this little line right here, and here's our reference line. So that means that the block, the center of mass of the block, is starting with a certain height, and it's going to end up at height equals zero. Okay, so uh, looking at our energy equation, the, the initial potential energy is just mgh initial. We'll assume that if it starts at rest, um, there is no initial kinetic energy. So by the time it slides down and compresses the spring all the way and stops, we ask the question, well, where does all that energy go? Well, in the end, uh, there's no MGH, because we're at height equals zero. However, there is spring energy. The spring gets compressed. So we have to plug in our 1 half kx squared in our final snapshot. Uh, it, it stopped, so there's no kinetic energy. But there's also heat. OK, so the, uh, the heat, remember, is the work done by friction. Work is force times distance. So uh, we need the friction force on a hill using our muffin equation. It's going to be our coefficient friction times the normal force. Well, on a hill, it's mg cosine theta. And then the distance where friction is acting is just how far it slides. Now that's actually the total distance to the spring, but then it also slides on the surface as you compress the spring. So d plus x in our picture, that's the total distance. So now we have an equation. And the only unknown there is x. 
Uh, this is going to turn out to be a quadratic equation. And keep in mind, one other thing we have to do is think about the initial height. Okay, that's the vertical height. Um, we can we have to write that in terms of x. So if we look at that triangle there, the vertical height, okay, that 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 side, that leg, that vertical leg of this triangle is hypotenuse times sine of the angle. Well, the hypotenuse is d plus x. So that times the sine of the angle of the hill tells you what that initial height is. Okay, so this turns out to be the full energy equation in terms of x. So this is the beast that we have to try to solve. <laughs> It'll be a quadratic equation. Um, good chance with something like this you'd be given numbers and you can plug numbers in and actually get a solution. But uh, in the end, yeah, th this is this is what the algebra gives us when we solve. You know, just take it from there. So, yeah, uh, a lot of things come into play, even in this relatively simple-looking problem. You've got uh, springs, you've got gravity, you've got friction, you've got hills, you've got the gravity triangle, um, you've got conservation of energy, and work done by friction. All that wrapped up in one. Uh, Non-constant forces, but we can still handle it as long as we can make use of that energy. We don't have to do any calculus here. Okay, so... Uh, this is pretty typical. These are the types of things that come into play when you have springs in your problem. And uh, I hope this helps. Until next time, we'll see you later.